I am sorry about that. <laughs> I just wanted to wake you up, guys. <laughs> How are you all doing? Good to see you all here. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Krishna. I'm the part of the show discussion team along with myself. I have got Karan over here on my right and Edwin. We're going to cover four ports, ladies and gentlemen, today, starting with uh, Valletta, Malta tomorrow, followed with uh, we will be going to Syracuse. Then we'll have Naples and our last port of call for this cruise is going to be port of Rome. Uh, so these are the four ports mainly we're going to cover. Uh, I'm going to give a bit of a brief history some excursions that can take you there or some of the things that you can do it on your own if you wish to and then so on and so forth my colleagues will also be covering are you already excited yes. yeah. all right let's go so today as you can see we are on the sea which is a bit of a relaxing day for all of you guys as well so you can really energize yourself followed with tomorrow morning we will be in Valletta then we will be in, in uh, Sicily uh, Syracuse followed with Naples and then on the first we will be arriving in Port of Rome. Moving on, for tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be arriving at 8 o'clock in the morning and all on board time for us is going to be 6.30 p.m. It's going to be a quite a long day and 7 o'clock for our scheduled departure. So please make sure you're back on board by 6.30 p.m. Uh, to give you a little bit of an overview, uh, how many of you have been to uh, Valletta before? I see one hand going up. I see another one. It's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful, beautiful town. We dock right at the waterfront, uh, which is called the Valletta Harbor Cruise. It's about between 10 to 15 minutes of a walking. For some guests, it may take lesser than that. There are taxis and elevator services available, which I will explain to all of you guys. And there are a few uh, attractions which you can cover if you wish to. For example, we have our cloak fishing village, which takes, that's the furthest one, which takes about 15 minutes drive. We have Medina and Rabat, 35 minutes. We have Grandmaster Palace, which takes about 20 minutes of time. And then we have Obiora de Castelle, which is about 16 to good 20 minutes of time. Now, as you can see this picture over here, and again, ladies and gentlemen, pictures that we use is just for illustrative purposes. You know, the products may differ. So this is how either on this one or on this one we'll be pulling in tomorrow morning. We do not have the exact details at the moment, but we will be pulling in one of these ones. Now, hypothetically, let's say if we walk, if we dock on this one, you will have your excursion buses right on the pier coming to pick all of you guys and if anybody wishes to take a walk as you can see from here you will have to walk put about let's say less than 10 minutes and this is the elevator that you will have to pay one euros per person and it will take you right up in the um, in the city and from there the city is right in front of you you can walk or the other option is which you can walk from this way but that's going to take a way longer time for anybody that would just like to go visit and the same way you can come back also to the ship you come back to the elevator and you take the elevator go down and then you will be able to come back to the ship so that's the purpose of this elevator is so that you do not have to walk a lot you take the elevator you're already on the top floor and from there the city actually begins wherever you would like to go um, i'll give you another picture can you see now so yeah. if we pull in here, then the buses for the excursions are going to be right over here. If we pull in here, then the excursion bus is going to be right over here. And then the elevator is right here. This you can see the elevator. Uh, that makes a lot easier for guests to just go up in the town and then explore. In addition, ladies and gentlemen, this is the waterfront where you'll find a lot of restaurants, quite a few shopping options as well. That would be available for all of you guys. Um, it's a it's a very nice area just to relax, unwind yourself, you know, uh, if you would like to. Uh, Valletta has been, of course, they have a very very strong history um, of this place. If I give you a little bit of a brief about it, they say that uh, in the central Mediterranean between the Sicily and the north of Afri African coast, it's a nation known for historic sites related to the succession of the rulers, including the Romans, the Moors, the Knight of St. John's. French and last but not the least was the British. It has numerous fortresses, uh, temples, and also they have got Sabatrian complex halls and about burial chamber dating back to 4000 BC. Uh, in addition, Valletta is the capital city of the Mediterranean nation Malta. The world city was established early 1500 uh, century and it's the peninsula by the Knight of St. John's Roman Catholic and known for its museum palaces and grand churches. In addition, they also have the barbecue landmarks. 
it's a problem, Max. I just wanted to check. <laughs> I wanted to check if everybody, <laughs> it's the Baroque landmarks that they have. Uh, what are the attractions we have in, in, in Valletta? We have got, of course, the Marshall, we have got the Grand Master Palace, we have got Bojo de Dwarja, or we have got the Marina. And... Now, to, to just give you a little bit brief, these are all sightseeing places. These are mostly that some of them you can do it on the walking tour, or some of them you can have to take a transportation. But mainly, these are all sightseeing tours that we have got. If you would like to explore something on your own, what are the options we have? Uh, beach lovers, we've got the sandy beach right over here. We have also got the Valletta waterfront, which you can do it on your own. We have got the St. John's Cathedral, which is right at the town. Let's say about 10 to 15 minutes from where we are. And then we have got the Moza, the Museum of Fine of Arts, which is also uh, located right there. The two of the most interesting one is of course the St. John's Cathedral. It's the Catholic uh, church dedicated to St. John's the Baptist. It was built by the Order of St. John's between 1573 to 1578, having been commissioned by the Grand Master Jean as the conventual church of St. John's. So that's one of the most historic locations they have, and the museum. The Musa is an art museum located at Agubere del Valletta Malta. It was formerly located at the admiratory house between 1974 until 2016 when it was known as the Nation Museum of Fine Arts, and it houses collection of works by the Maltese and also for many foreign artists, mainly representing the major European artistic style that they have. So these are something that you can do it on your own. We have, of course, got some of the excursions that can take you. We have the Valletta and its noble families. We have got the Malta War Time and History. We have got Medina's Noble Heritage, and we have also got Medina and uh, uh, Boutique Wineries. These are a couple of options. Followed with, we have got a couple of more, which is the Discover Valletta and Musa, that's the museum that you'll be going. We have Marshall of Maltese, it's cooking class. We have Bozo James, which is a very popular excursion we have. And then we have the Malta highlights. That gives you an overall highlights of the uh, of the town that we'll be visiting. So these are some of the excursions that we have. Of course, we have got a couple of more, which will allow you to go through on the app and you will be also able to know. So as I said, we have got four on this side, which is again very much deeply rooted with the history, culture, and then we have got few that gives you a bit for sightseeing of Malta. So that would be all from Malta, ladies and gentlemen. I'll have Karan over here. He'll give you a bit of a brief about Syracusa for our following post. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Karan. Hello everyone, good morning, good morning. So my name is Karan, I'm part of the Excursions team. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you so much Krishna for the loving uh, uh, details about the previous spot. So today I'm now going to talk to you about Syracuse, Sicily. Okay, we'll be there on the 6th uh, from 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, 4.30. Uh, now something important is that this is a tender port guys. So the all on board might be 4 o'clock in that case. What I'd recommend is just check when you're leaving the gangway, the all on board time, okay? For the tender port, you know, we come back one hour earlier than the ship departure time. So very, very important. Uh, you guys did a tender port yesterday, so you are now aware of the logistics of how it works. A lot of people ask us the questions, do we need a tender ticket or don't need a tender ticket? Very simple, if your excursion ticket says meeting on the ship in the theater, you don't need one, right? You just come over to the venue and we'll check you in and we will take you outside on the tender boat. In case for any reason, if it says it's meeting on the pier ashore, you need a tender ticket. I believe all of you should already have your tender tickets from collecting them day before or yesterday, right? Uh, in case you don't, feel free to reach out to guest services and they'll be happy to assist you, okay? Now coming down to the cruise port in Syracuse, we have two sites. Uh, uh, we are going to be docked on berth number three. Now tender ports are a little tricky. It completely depends on how the winds are looking, where exactly the ship gets permission to dock. It depends on how the pilot is going to navigate and put us as close as possible to the port. And then we are be going to docking in with our tender ports, or we might use the local tender ports. Completely depends on how it looks uh, when we are in Syracuse. Uh, the town is right there in front of you as soon as you get off. You can easily be just walk into town. There's a lot of archaeological sites that you can visit, so quite a lot of things to do close by. There's no shuttles required. You do have local taxis available if you'd like to use that. However, it's very simple and easy to walk into town, as you can see in the picture, right? You get off in the pier. If not this one, there's one more bird similar on the other side, and it's pretty identical. So you, it's very easy. Once you get off, you will see 
uh, all the shops and everything right in front of you. For your chores, as you're aware, one of us will be there on the port to check you in, right? So look for us. There will be signs. If you see a sign but you don't see us, just take a minute, look around, try to find us. Maybe we are just busy, but and we can check you in, all right, for your chores. And from there, you know how it is. Your guides take you, and then you enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, for those of you who are looking to go to a beach maybe, if you want to do a beach, there are no beaches close by. The closest beach is like around 20 minutes drive. There are 6 to 7 beaches in Siracusa, so I'm not sure which, in case you do have a beach in mind, maybe you can ask us and we can tell you how far is it exactly from the pier, or you could look it up yourself. But if you're looking for a beach close by, walking distance, unfortunately there's nothing close by, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now these are some of the highlights that you could do by yourself. They are like 15 to 20 minutes walking distance from the terminal. Like the Temple of Apollo, very very popular. It was built in the 6th century. And of course it uh, pays tribute to Apollo. There is a, a, it's a very nice little place. It's open, you can just walk around. It's 15 minutes like I said from the pier. Not very very far. And then you have uh, a dedication to Apollo engraved in one of the pillars over there. So something you'd like to maybe get a picture of if you are planning to go out by yourself. Uh, the second famous place that you have is the Fountain of Enthusia, which is again very very beautiful. If you want a nice picture of the whole bay area, this is the spot you need to come to. Again, 20 minutes from where we are and then you can walk down. You could even try to see if you can get to transportation, but I would ideally suggest try to walk down because you get a nice feel of the whole town when you're going all the way there. Uh, and then the last spot is called the Cathedral of Siracusa. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So again, very, very popular, very beautiful. I've seen the pictures from inside as well. It looks fantastic. I, I know we've seen a lot of <laughs> churches and cathedrals in the last uh, few days, uh, but something again, you can add on your list and definitely check out, all right? Uh, so these are three sites, again, 15 to 20 minutes from the terminal. So something, if you're planning to just do by yourself, having a nice, easy day, you can check it out, right? Now coming down to the tours that we have. Now in Siracusa, there are also three or four towns close by, which are very worth visiting. So what we've done is we have an excursion which actually takes you to the town and then you have free time over there. Now depending on your requirements, that's something you can figure out for yourself. So the first one is Taudomina. This is a very, very nice little town. It is a long tour in general, seven hours, because it's going to be a one and a half hour drive to this little town from where we are docked. And once you are there, you know, if you've been on an excursion, you know how it is, right? The guide is going to walk you around, give you brief history for the first 40 to 45 minutes, then they give you free time. And after that, you take the transportation back. So a lot of people have asked me like, you know, I want to do this town, I want to do this town. So of course, I, I've seen many of you have done your research, but of course, if you'd like to know something very specific about the place, we are more than happy to answer them for you, right? So the first tour is Taromina that you could visit. The second one is Siracusa itself, classic Siracusa. So it's a small tour, four, four and a half hours. Will strongly, uh, it is something strenuous in the sense because we will be walking quite a bit in this one, around two hours. The guide takes you to all the sites that I mentioned in the first one and also around the town area. So uh, four, four and a half hours to see all the uh, historical sites in Siracusa as well. And then the last one is Catania. So Catania is one of the places from where you can get a nice view of Mount Etna and then also you get to see this beautiful city. It is also called the Black City. The reason is because of the volcano eruptions, the ashes fall onto the city. So again, the city has a very deep history because it has been time and time been damaged because of the volcano eruption and the earthquakes that happened in the place and then they had to reconstruct it again and again. So very deep history has some fantastic boutique shops. So if you're into shopping, if you want something very unique, then this is something you can try. This again is around one and a half hour away from where we are docked. So the town is a little further down. The tour in itself is four and a half to five hours, depending on how traffic looks like. So you drive down and then you spend your time over there and then you come back, all right? Now Ragusa and Ibla is the third town that I'm going to be talking about. This one currently is sold out, but of course, if any of you are interested and you like a spot, you can come and speak to us and we'll try to make arrangements. We'll check if we can get you on the tour or not. At the moment, it's sold out, but yes, please let us know. Now, this is the furthest most town that we have. It's almost two hours away from the pier. But again, a very beautiful town, as you can see, it's located a little bit up on the slope. So it can be strenuous in the sense that you might have some upward climbing, uh, walking involved. 
so something if you are booked keep that in mind also guys we do see uh, that some of you come in flip flops i would recommend that in europe <laughs> try to wear shoes and come so it's good for you it's easier to walk it's safer so something very very important to keep in mind all right so just dress to that attire is going to be just be helpful for you again once you are there you will see the whole town as it was built you have the saint james apostle the saint george church again very very interesting and beautiful so do check it out now for all you wine lovers we have the wine tasting at pupilo so this is a very very nice interesting uh, vineyard which was established in 1908 it has its own history when you go down there they show you the wine cellar they show you the process of wine making and of course <coughs> the best part in the end is trying the wine and some cheese along with it or some snacks along with it depending on how they want to complement with the wines that they're going to serve to you it's a small simple tour like 2 to 2 and a half hours so what you could do is you could go quickly do this one try some fantastic wine and then come back and then still enjoy Siracusa on the rest of your day and then come back to the ship, right? And then the last one is the Baruch uh, town of Noto or barbecue like as <laughs> Krishna mentioned. So yeah, so Baruch town of Noto, again, it is known for its architecture. Very, very nice architecture. Again, a lot of churches though. So very, very famous. It has a lot of churches and cathedrals. So something if you're interested in the architecture and the fine art, uh, I would recommend you checking out this tour. It's not very long, it's again four hours, but the drive time is around uh, 30 to 45 minutes to this beautiful town. So these are the four towns, and then the Siracusa and then the wine tasting. These are the tours that we have with us. But of course, if you plan to do something by yourself, you're more than welcome to. And of course, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to come and ask us and we'll be happy to assist you, all right? Uh, no shuttles for that day. Like I said, everything is close by, so you really actually don't need a shuttle. You could easily just walk in and do your own thing, all right? So that's all from my side, guys. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to have Edwin come over and talk about the next part, all right? Have a good day, guys. Thank you, Brandon. Okay, as you know, I'm Edwin, and I'm gonna talk about Naples. Naples is the regional capital of Campania and is the third largest city in Italy, after Rome and Milan. It was founded by the Greeks in the first millennium BC, and Naples has been the oldest continuously inhabited urban areas in the world. What do you know about Naples? Something to eat. Very famous, correct. Pizza. Pizza is one of the most international fast food, which has spread from Naples to the rest of Italy and then to the world think about Naples, we think about Pisa. Okay, so the ship is gonna be docked. It's gonna, the name of the pier is Stazione Marittima Napoli. That is a five minutes walk from town. So basically you exit the terminal and the town is right there. It's a five minutes walk. No shuttles needed, but you will find also taxis in the area if you wanna go somewhere else specifically. Uh, the main attractions, in the main attractions, that all of these are walking distance, as I said, are Piazza Previsito, Castel Nuovo, and Galleria Umberto. These are right outside the terminal. It's a five, 10 minute walk maximum. Then if you wanna go somewhere else on your own, like for example, Capri, the station, the, how do you call this, the, the small ships? I forgot the name, sorry. The ferry, thank you. The ferry is a 10 minutes walk from there. Uh, the advice if you wanna go by your own, please buy your tickets in advance. There's a website where you can buy the tickets if you wanna visit Capri. The main attractions in Naples are gonna be Pompeii, the island of Capri, and the Amalfi Coast. Pompeii is the UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's a vast archeological park. Pompeii was a prosperous and sophisticated Roman city that was buried under meters of ash and pumice following the catastrophic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79. Then the island of Capri, Capri is an island in the Italian Gulf of Naples. It's famous for its rich landscape, hotels, and upscale shopping centers. It's a very popular destination for the rich and famous. The, the Amalfi Coast, the Amalfi Coast is part of the Sorrentine Peninsula. They have different towns like Sorrento, Amalfi, that you can visit. 
the views are spectacular and they have also very nice, uh, they have a beach opportunity if you wanna go in this place. The tours that we offer in Pompeii, it's gonna be, we just have two options. There's Pompeii on your own or the easy exploration of Pompeii. Pompeii on your own is approximately a three and a half hours ticket where an escort will take you to the site. Pompeii is about 30 minutes drive from the pier. This is gonna be a self-guided tour. There is no tickets included. So if you choose this tour, I highly recommend it to buy your tickets in advance because at the site, you can play, find long lines and then you will waste the time in line buying the tickets, okay? Because our exposure is just the transfer. Then, the easy exploration of Pompeii, this is a special design for people or for our guests with mobility issues. It will take a different road that will allow you to visit Pompeii in a, let's say, a more comfortable way if you have the good walkies or even if you are in a wheelchair, okay? So you can visit also. In this excursion is guided and the tickets, the entrance tickets are included. Now, for the ones who are planning to visit Pompeii on their own, I highly recommend, as Karan mentioned, to have closed toe shoes because Pompeii is, if you want to explore the entire park, it's a lot, a lot of walking. Everything inside is made of rocks or stones. So especially now that we are in the European summer, you know that it's very, very hot. Those stones get very, very hot and also they reflect the heat back. So please keep in mind to have uh, to take your precautions when visiting this site. The island of Capri. We also have one excursion going to the island of Capri, that is Capri on your own. This is a nine hours duration self-guided tour. So say again, like in the previous one, no tickets are included. There is no lunch included, it's just the transportation to Capri. So to go to Capri, you will take approximately an hour ferry ride to the island of Capri. Then your tour escort will give you a small briefing about the island, and then you will have approximately five hours to explore the island at your own, okay? Five hours of free time approximately. This will give you the opportunity to, to do your own thing, without the need to be following a group. Because Capri is also a lot of walking and the island is not really wheelchair accessible. Okay, so plan, plan uh, accordingly. The tour escort will drop you at the bottom part of the island because the, island, the main area is located on top of the mountain. From there, you will need to buy the funicular ticket. The funicular ticket is like, um, not really a cable car, but let's say it's like a small train to take you to the Piazzetta, where all the shops, the restaurants are. At the bottom part, there are also some uh, shops and restaurants. And also in the pier, or where this uh, drop off point, you can rent a boat if you wanna visit the Blue Grotto, that is one of the famous landmarks in Capri. If you wanna go also to the upper part, that is Ana Capri, at the bottom, you can hire a small, it's not like a van, but there are more mini buses. There are like six, eight passengers that will take you to the upper part of Capri that is called Anna Capri. Then for the Amalfi Coast, we have three excursions going there. We have the Leisure de Sorrento, Taste of Sorrento, and the Amalfi Coast by Moro Lounge. So Leisure de Sorrento, same, is a self-guided excursion. It's half, uh, five hours approximately, with a 90 minutes drive each way to Sorrento. Then you will have approximately two and a half hours of free time for you to explore the city. Taste of Sorrento. Taste of Sorrento is a semi-guided excursion where you will visit first a farm. So to, you will see how to, <coughs> they prepare the local mozzarella cheese, how they harvest the tomatoes, they prepare the salami. And you will also have the opportunity to taste some limoncello. Yeah, limoncello. <laughs> After that, the visit the farm, you will have approximately one hour of free time in Sorrento to do your own thing. The total duration of this excursion is gonna be six hours. The, the Amalfi Coast by Motor Lounge, 
First, you will have a scenic drive the approximately 45 minutes to Salerno. Salerno is another town in the Amalfi Coast. From Salerno, you will board the boat and you will have a scenic cruise that approximately will last one hour to the Amalfi town. So here you will be visited three times, three towns, sorry. You will go first in a scenic drive in a bus to Salerno, then an hour boat ride to Amalfi, and then they will, sorry, Salerno, then the Amalfi, and then you will have another hour of uh, free time in Salerno. So it combines a boat and a bus. In, for this, for the ones who decide to go to the Amalfi Coast, the roads there are very windy. So be careful if you get car sick. These are very windy roads and they are also winding, winding. winding sorry, sorry, man. <laughs> very winding. Thanks, you got it. So very windy, yes. And they are, all those roads are built next to the cliffs, you know? So you will have the mountain on one side, the ocean in the other side. So, but the views are very, very spectacular. <laughs> so those will be the tours that we will offer in Naples. Now, Christian is gonna continue with this. Thank you so much, uh, Edwin and Karen, thank you so much. That was very, uh, Edwin, you've got Rome as well. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be our last port of call. That's our room covered by Edwin again. Ciao for now, yes. Rome, what we can say about Rome? Many things, right? The eternal city. So in Rome, we're gonna be docked in Civitavecchia. We are not exactly in Rome itself, but we are in Civitavecchia, that is the port of Rome. Civitavecchia is a coastal town northeast of Rome in Italy. Built in the second century, the port of Civitavecchia still remains some of the original features, like the Roman dock. The port of air includes in Sorry, <clears throat> the port area also includes the 16th century Michelangelo Fort. Uh, Civitavecchia is located approximately 50 miles or 80 kilometers from Rome, okay? So the drive to Rome is approximately 90 minutes from the pier to the city of Rome. We are going to be Rome Terminal or Rome Cruise Ship, Cruise Ship Terminal. It's a huge terminal. We don't know exactly where we are going to be docking, but uh, here, if you want to just explore Civitavecchia, the port authorities will provide a shuttle from the docking area to the main gate. And from the gate, you have uh, all the town of Civitavecchia. And for the ones who want to explore Rome at their own, from the gate, it's approximately a 20 minutes walk to the train station. You can take a train to go to Rome. The train ride is approximately one hour as well, okay? Rome. As the main attractions in Rome, we have the Colosseum, the Roman Forum, the Trevi Fountain, and the Pantheon. So the Colosseum is an amphitheater in the center of the city of Rome, and is the largest amphitheater ever built. The Roman Forum, it was also, known also as Forum Romanum, is a rectangular, Forum surrounded by rings of several important buildings. This was the political center of Rome at that time. The Trevi Fountain, the Trevi Fountain is one of the most, if it's not the most, fountain in the world. It's, it was built in the 17th century. And there is a particular thing here. There is a legend that they say if you toss a, or, sorry, if you throw a coin in the fountain, you will be back many times to Rome. So if you want to come back to Rome, get ready to throw, not, your, not a coin, but maybe your credit card. <laughs> so you will make sure you come back. The Pantheon, the Pantheon was a Roman temple. Now it is a church where they used to worship one of the Roman gods. Also another attraction when you visit Rome is gonna be the Vatican City. Remember the Vatican City is a sovereign state, landlocked within Italy where is the base of the Holy See and is ruled by the Pope. What to see in the Vatican City? In the Vatican City, you can visit the Sixteen Chapel, the St. Peter's Basilica, and the Vatican City itself. The Sixteen Chapel is part of the Vatican Museums. 
If you are planning to visit that, also my suggestion is to buy your tickets in advance. If you plan to visit, I mean, at your home. St. Peter's Basilica and the Vatican City, all of those are in the same area. As is the peak of the summer season, and of course, peak of the touristic season, very, very long lines and crowded areas are expected there. So if you're planning to visit this area, you need to be very mindful that to make it uh, fast and so you can come back on time. The excursions that we are offering in Rome, if you just wanna have a wide view of the city, because it is impossible to do Rome in a few hours, you have the Roman side scene by Tuk Tuk. This one is approximately a night, uh, sorry, a 10 hours excursion. And you will have a two hours of a guided tuk in a tuk tuk. So you will pass for the mainland march in Rome. And then you will have approximately two hours of free time to explore at your own. So first you will do two and a half hours guided tour around Rome with a tuk tuk and then three hours of, two hours of free time. Explore Rome, it's a semi, sorry, it's a just the transfer. It's basically Rome at your own. They will drop you close to the St. Peter's Square and then you will have approximately five hours of free time. <clears throat> Panoramic Rome is designed for our guests with mobility issues. Uh, this is a five hours excursion. They will do just photo stops in the main landmarks of Rome. And then you will have approximately 45 minutes of free time in the St. Peter's Square. All our visits are exterior visits. None of these uh, excursions <coughs> include interior pieces, okay? And the last one is Taste of Rome. This is a little bit more, uh, let's say, complete. It's also semi-guided. You will visit areas like the Roman Forum, the Trevi Fountain, and the St. Peter's Basilica. Now, this is all for Rome. Now I can pass it to Krista. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Edwin and for Harman. Thank you so much, guys. Well, this, I know for most of you already aware, but I just want to cover also because we have a lot of our new guests as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have got a dedicated desk, not only to book excursions, but also to answer your questions or doubts or anything that you want to clear. So feel free to visit us during our opening hours, or if you would like to know what's going on, what are the excursions that are available, you can always browse the app as well. Just something that I wanted to catch up from Rome uh, after Edwin is remember ladies and gentlemen, in Rome, some of the tours might not be running. And the reason for that is that the participation is really, really, really low. Okay, in some of the tours, I only have about four or five guests. Why? Because it's an embarkation day. There's a lot of guests going and there's a lot of guests coming. So that's why. So all the excursions that we discussed, there could be few of them that might get canceled because of the low participation. So we just wanted to bring that to your attention. Again, this is a reminder for all our guests. Please make sure you bring your photo ID, original passport, wherever you're going by default for all of Europe. I know in some ports they might check, in some ports they might not check but we don't want to have a situation where they ask if you don't have a passport. So I would rather have everybody have it with you. And please, please, it is your responsibility to take it with you and keep it safe. See pass card, excursions ticket if you happen to be with us, and groups. There's one thing that we noticed is that some of our guests are coming before and some of our guests are coming later. Ladies and gentlemen, if we have one bus, no problem at all, we can accommodate everyone. But if we happen to have multiple buses, which is going to be the case in Europe, at the last minute, if you ask us to put together, it'll be very, very difficult because it creates an inconvenience for all other guests that we have to ask, change and all that thing. So the, whenever you decide, please all come together. We'll put all of you in the same bus and try and stick to your meeting time. Not too much of before or not too much of after. Well, after the tour will be gone, but try at least <laughs> 15 minutes before the meeting time is perfect for us. That's the time we open the theater as well because it makes it easier for us to not have the guest seating for an hour in the theater because of the buses, you know? Because the bus is only gonna come about 15 to 20 minutes before the tour. The important notes, time and again, I have discussed, ladies and gentlemen, with all of you, there are something that we really, really want to pay attention, is especially for somebody who has the dietary restrictions. If you know that you're going on a tour and that does include a lunch or something, and you have a specific issue with something, you must inform us at least 48 hours before so we can inform our tour operators. Also on a tour where especially you know that it does involve a lot of walking, 
And if you happen to be <coughs> in your wheelchair or scooter or any sort of other device that you're using, it's good always to check with that just to make sure you can either switch a tour to something else or you can find something which is more easy and convenient for all of you ladies and gentlemen. And last but not the least, remember our cancellation policy in Europe stands down at 48 hours. We cannot try and cancel something at the last minute. And that's why we're encouraging our guest. You definitely plan for the tours that you must know that you will be going. But if you're not something sure about, at least come 48 hours before. Because in Europe, once the buses and guides are confirmed, if you don't participate, I won't be able to make a refund. Am I making sense, ladies and gentlemen? Why? Because they have, it, they, it's not only Serenade of the Seas is going in Europe. There are a lot of private tours. There's a lot of other ships are also going. So if they confirm something for us, that means they have to reserve that for us. And we cannot cancel because they will still charge uh, to the Royal. And of course, the guides is, as I had mentioned in one of my last talks as well, once you're off the ship on a tour, the main person that will be taking care or looking after all of you guys is your guide. And guide is something that you must pay attention to. You must listen to him or her, whatever they're saying, especially with the times when they give you a free time. Also, if you do not understand something, you must ask the guide again, because that's what their job is, to clarify what you're not able to understand. Because sometimes we do have situations, guest comes back and says, hey, we didn't understand this part. But now it's already too late. You had the moment to check with the guide right over there for a bit of history or whatever uh, they were trying to explain. And as you all know, some of the churches or the temples, especially for Rome that we'll be visiting, please, please make sure you have the right attire that is needed for all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was all from our side. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time that you always bring it to us. If there's any doubts, questions, anything you have, remember, I'll be open from 10 to 12. Uh, the desk will be open and again from will be open from 5 to 8 in the evening today. So we look forward to see you around and clear any of your doubts or questions that you have. Thank you so much and you all have a wonderful day guys. Thank you.